The following material is presented for educational and training purposes and is intended for physicians and allied health professionals familiar with cardiovascular surgery. The ESVS mesh device is not approved in the USA. The ESVS mesh is indicated for maintaining saphenous vein bypass graft patency in patients undergoing coronary artery bypass procedures utilizing autologous saphenous vein grafts with external diameters from 3.6 millimeters to 7.0 millimeters and double wall thicknesses less than 1.4 millimeters. Do not use this product in patients with a known infection or suspected infection in the field of operation or allergy to nitinol or its components, nickel and titanium. For complete information on this product, please refer to the instructions for use. Kipps Bay Medical, a medical technology company dedicated to advancing, refining, and improving cardiac surgery. Contemporary cabbage or coronary artery bypass grafting typically includes the use of saphenous vein conduits to bypass multiple coronary vessels. Introducing the Kipps Bay ESVS mesh, a single-strand knitted nitinol wire prosthesis indicated for maintaining saphenous vein graft patency in patients undergoing coronary artery bypass surgery. The ESVS mesh placed over the outside of the vein graft is designed to mildly downsize vessel diameter and provide a compliant external support to the vein wall. The desired results are a more uniform lumen with improved flow characteristics. Additionally, the amount of radial support while allowing for vessel compliance seeks to reduce undesirable excessive wall stress, which leads to the injury response and intimal hyperplasia. Implantation of the ESVS mesh is straightforward and fits well within the current practice of coronary artery bypass surgery utilizing either on or off pump techniques. After the targeted saphenous vein has been harvested, all side branches must be ligated using small diameter sutures such as 7 proline. Ligation clips cannot be used as they interfere with the deployment of the mesh over the vein. Gently inflate the vein using heparinized saline to check for any leaks. Carefully remove any excess fascia or adipose tissue from the vein. After all side branches have been ligated, gently evacuate the vein lumen of all air and fluid. The first step in qualifying the vein for use with the mesh is to assess its double wall thickness. This is performed using the sterile sizing tool supplied with each device. The decompressed vein should fit into the 2x wall slot on the sizing tool as shown, without deformation or stretch. Be sure to assess several locations along the length of the vein. If the vein does not easily fit inside this slot without deformation, then the ESVS mesh should not be used. The next step in qualification is to assess the outside diameter of the fluid-filled vein. Clamp the distal end of the vein. Gently fill the vessel with heparinized fluid until it takes its natural round shape. To avoid potential luminal injury, do not overfill the vein. Again, using the sizing tool, attempt to fit the largest sections of the filled vein into the slots on the tool as shown, beginning with the null symbol slot and ending with a 4.5 millimeter slot. The smallest slot into which the segment fits without deformation indicates by size and color code which size mesh to use. If the target vein fits easily within the null symbol slot, or is too large to fit within the 4.5 mm slot without deformation, then the vein's outside diameter does not qualify for use with the mesh. To prepare the vein for mesh deployment, again, gently remove all fluid and air. Remaining fluid or air may be trapped by the intraluminal valves and could impair mesh deployment. Next, pass a 2O or larger suture through both walls of the distal end of the vein. The suture tails should be longer than the length of the mesh delivery tube. A wire suture snare comes preloaded through the delivery tube of each device. Check to make sure the hook end protrudes out the flared end of the tube. Snare the tails of the suture and pull them back through the delivery tube. Next, gently wet the inside of the delivery tube and the outside of the vein with heparinized saline. Straighten the vein so that it lies without twist and align the delivery tube with the vein. Holding the suture tails in one hand, 
gently grasp the everted end of the delivery tube with the other hand and carefully push the tube over the vein to the cannula tip. Avoid twisting or stretching the vein. If any resistance is encountered, stop and check to make sure no fluid or air is trapped in the vein. Push the distal end of the mesh over the vein and cannula tip and affix the mesh to the tip with a suture tie. Next, have an assistant anchor the cannulated end of the graft. Then grasp only the delivery tube and pull it back off the vein to deploy the mesh. Feeling a small amount of resistance is normal as the mesh deploys over the flared end of the delivery tube. If the mesh becomes stuck on the delivery tube, cease pulling the tube and push the remaining portion of the mesh towards the cannulated end. Once the mesh has been fully deployed, clamp the open end of the vein and gently inflate. Inspect the conduit, ensuring the outside of the vein makes contact with the inside surface of the mesh along its entire length. Dry the entire surface of the graft with a lap sponge or towel, and then apply a thin coating of fibrin sealant to the entire surface of the vein and mesh. Rotate the vein to ensure complete coverage. Allow the sealant to dry as per the manufacturer's instructions for use. The saphenous vein with the ESVS mesh is now fully prepared and can be stored prior to implant by gently covering it with a moistened sterile towel or placing it in heparinized saline solution. Prior to mesh graft implant, trim the end for the distal anastomosis to the appropriate angle taking care to ensure that no metal trimmings fall into the lumen. Suture the distal anastomosis using your standardized method. Care must be taken to ensure that one row of ESVS mesh is incorporated into the suture line of the anastomosis. Trim the graft for the proximal anastomosis by making an angled cut and spatulating the heel. Ensure that the heel of the ESVS mesh graft has a longitudinal notch or slit, the length of which is equal to or greater than the diameter of the graft. Also ensure that the diameter of the trimmed graft opening is at least 20% larger than the aortotomy in order to form an adequate hood at the site of the proximal anastomosis. Failure to do so can result in a flattening of the graft at the proximal anastomotic site, which may compromise the graft lumen. Kipps Bay Medical, a medical technology company dedicated to advancing, refining, and improving cardiac surgery.